places um, that were not standardized and were in you know different places and, and happening by different people. Um, so what, what's the problem we're solving here? So this client manufactures and sells disposable medical devices. Uh, before this tool, their reps were creating quotes for customers using whatever templates they chose and with really no guidelines on how to provide discounts and set prices. Um, and because of that, these would get sent out and then sometimes pulled back if the prices were too low. Um, once these were reviewed by higher ups, and even if it wasn't an extreme case like that, they were still losing on potential profits. So the solution um, is the pricing tool, which generally lives on this quote screen here. Um, the, the sales process starts with an opportunity generally. However, the pricing tool itself starts here when they generate the quote from the opportunity. Uh, so the client wanted to allow the reps to select products that they wanted to put on a specific quote and have the system tell them the target price for that product. And this would be customer specific based on the type of customer, whether they're, for example, a hospital or a retailer, um, how much revenue is, is on average generated from that customer, as well as prices that have been previously sold uh, for that same product. So if we go to the product grid here, and start adding products. Uh, if I'm a sales rep, I'm going to go in. I have the quote created for this client, and then I'm going to add the products that I want to quote uh, to quote for the client. And of course, this is blocking my button. There we go. So we select the products, and this loads them onto the quote. And you can see here this target price. So this is the price that the system says that they should be aiming for uh, when they're actually doing the quote. This here is the uh, the price that the actual sales rep is going to give to the client. So they are, they're only gonna see this proposed price. This is what the system's telling them they should be aiming for. So if I enter 1450 for that, you know, it's really not gonna do much, but if I enter something like $7 here and $7 here, once this saves, pricing calculation goes on in the background and then it generates some metrics that the approvers can use to determine whether or not this quote should actually go through. So over here, you'll see deviation from target. That just shows you the percentage that this has decreased from the actual target price. Um, and this triggers several different calculations in the background, but one of them, which is the most important, is this approval of the required. So this just shot up to the exec VP, which is basically the head of the department um, so basically, this needs to go through all the managers that uh, are above the sales rep until it hits the head of the department because this is a terrible quote. Hey, um, Justin. Yes. What does it do when you go over the target price? They don't care about that. That's what <laughs> that, I was that's wondering. A good so thing. is it a 0% deviation? Correct. Yeah. So if I put $30 <laughs> here, that is a good thing. And that is no deviation. Everything is bueno. So gotcha. yeah, that that goes through no problem, right? Right I'm now. Okay, it, I'm sure it would, yeah. right? Like that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so they, they don't mind that at all. Find a sales guy that will issue. quote more than it is and try and yeah. sell it for more. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, those, they've found him. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> they do not penalize that. Okay. Yeah. So Thanks. right now it's it's set to go to the manager in all cases, but once they've kind of piloted this and are comfortable with auto-generated prices, which I think we can understand that that might not be comfortable for everyone at the beginning, but once they trust the system um, for, for something with no deviation or very low deviation, it doesn't actually need approval and they can just send it directly to the client. Um, but right now it, it automatically goes at least to the first manager. So it uses the, the Azure AD hierarchy from the sales rep. So it keeps going up the, the manager levels until whatever approval level specified here is met and approved. Obviously they can deny the quote and it can go back to the sales rep and they can keep trying to submit it with changes if they want to. Um, also every manager in the chain can make their own changes before submitting that to the next step. Let's see. So now that we have a quote with products, uh, it needs to be sent out for approval. And that's this request approval button here. So all the rep has to do is click that button and that triggers a flow, uh, which basically just goes through the management chain and sends out an approval notification um, with some details about the quote and a link to the quote. The manager will see that they can approve or deny. Um, and then that keeps repeating until whatever required approval level is met or not. Um, 
and they can do that through Teams or through Outlook. It's it's a standard flow approval, which is pretty cool, actually. I'm not going to go over the actual flow uh, because I don't understand the whole thing myself, and it's fairly complicated. But it's it's that's the basic idea. So there's other one more important detail that was built into this that was actually fairly simple to build on our side, but it was pretty important for them, uh, which solved another one of their pain points, which are reports that are generated off of these things. Um, so let me show you an example of that. They have a bunch of different versions of that, but it's it's pretty much the same thing with some minor tweaks. But as I said before, the reps were just using whatever tools and whatever method they wanted to to send out these quotes. So they they weren't consistent and they weren't always professional. A lot of times it was just in an email and they just listed the prices in the email and then, you know, whatever format they wanted to put that. So now they have these PDF reports, which will hopefully get created at some point in this process. It does not usually take this long uh, unless I'm demoing it, of course. While that's generating, <laughs> we can look at the configuration page. So this is the front end that the sales reps actually use. Um, in the back, the actual pricing team. I'm trying to get rid of this presenting bar here. <laughs> do I actually do? There we go. Has access to configuration page. So they can tweak the, the algorithm or, or what feeds into the algorithm that actually generates those target prices. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on here, and it's specific to each organization inside the company. Um, so they can set volume discount minimums, um, slope percentages, which is which I don't completely understand either, a minimum margin. And, and what these do is, is it sets different levels at, at which it automatically triggers a higher escalation. Um, they can set which escalation is required for the minimum margin levels, and they can set discounts for different types of facilities. So usually hospitals gets bigger discounts than, again, people actually just selling the equipment. Um, and then... They can even do it on an individual product level. So for every product in the system, they can set list price, a discount for that product, override the discount. And these are kind of the same thing, but they wanted to include both. And the level at which that product gets auto escalated. So it, there's a lot of control that they have over this, uh, the, the, the pricing process in the background. Um, if they don't like the results, they can tweak it to their heart's content and make this work for whatever their, their needs are. So this is the report. I'll actually create a PDF here. So again, fairly simple, but it's it's nice and consistent and professional looking, um, and it's something that they can give to the client and know that uh, you know it's it's not going to it's going to represent their sales process effectively. So they were really happy about this. Fairly simple, but they love this. They they want a bunch more reports now just because they didn't even know this was a possibility that they could do. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, one more thing to show. This is the sales rep form. There's also a form just for approvers that just shows different metrics that they don't necessarily want the reps to see. Uh, but this helps the actual people going and improving, which is generally the management chain. Um, so they can get a bit more details before they actually agree to submit this pricing. And that's pretty much it. Any questions on the pricing tool? Uh, what are you using to query the Graph API? Is it just a plugin or like a Azure so or function? I'm not using the Graph API. We're actually, is this for the, the Azure AD stuff? Yeah. So there's a flow connector called Get Manager, I believe. And it allows you to skip the Graph API and just directly get the manager of whatever. Um, you can use the email. So you, you can tie the Serum user record to the Azure AD record and just send in that email address, um, and it'll give you back the manager. OK. And then you can so look that user up in Serum based on the email address. So basically, all this functionality is done with a plugin that runs on change of the quote products in the editable quote subgrid, quote mm -hmm. product subgrid, and then a bunch of flows. There's one flow for the approval, um, and then there are a bunch of plugin stuff on the back end that's, that's mainly on the quote product. Yes, there are some on the quote itself, but that is basically correct. Okay. Yeah, we try to keep it as simple as possible. 
there's mm -hmm. enough complication in the algorithm part, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and uh, changes on their part as well for that. Um, th there's enough financial issues here with, with getting the numbers right where we didn't want to complicate the rest of the system. And I think that that was a good decision. There's also some JavaScript on buttons like this, submit pricing. Um, there's an Oracle component to this. So a lot of the financial data is in an Oracle database. And these prices actually need to get loaded to that database. So it, it calls an API that retrieves some pricing data when these are loaded. And this button here also submits the pricing data back to Oracle. But that's a fairly minor component. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Looks like Jonathan. Next question. The editable uh, grids, mm -hmm. did you just use standard and just tweak it or did you guys have to develop the whole grid? No, this is standard editable grid. Um, I'm assuming everyone's seen the enhanced product grid at this point, but um, in this one, where did I put that? I don't have that open anymore, but yeah, the, the they've modified the in fact, I can create a new quote here because it's actually pretty cool. Of course, nothing's working now. <laughs> Anyways, there's a, and I think it's still in preview technically, but there's an enhanced version of the ad products uh, window that pops up if you enable it. Um, that's pretty cool. So we didn't have to actually customize anything. The only thing I guess you can say is customize is I locked a lot of these fields on the grid so that you can only edit the ones that um, that they should be able to edit, such as proposed price. Um, sales reps apparently cannot be trusted. If you let them start changing the target price themselves, they will do so. So that is one thing to be aware of. But yeah, all all standard out of the box. How did and then you, you just get oh, the? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. How did you get the little uh, stars on the sub? <laughs> yeah, I I did not know that that was a thing you could do, but apparently you can add emojis to uh, field names. So that was a client request, and they showed me how to do it. You can put emojis in in these labels. You can do it in option sets too. Yeah, I actually wasn't too happy about that, but they were pretty excited, so. <laughs> it looks pretty. Come yes. on, Justin. <laughs> yeah, color makes them crazy. Yeah, I, just... I actually, uh, I saw Nevin, something Nevin did where you can add color to fields and told them about that, and they were very happy about that possibility as well, so. Another thing to to work on. With uh, locking it down, did you just use field level security? Is no, just did? JavaScript. OK, so it did not have to set up field level security, although in the future, if, if they get any very smart sales reps that know how to use something like advanced find, that is something that I brought up as a risk uh, because they could start modifying these um, if they figure out how to get to it. And mm -hmm. field level security would be a good idea in that case, but they didn't want to go there yet. Very cool. What are the, the so from the salesperson side, what are the notifications that they're getting? Is it just emails or something just for the actual approvals? It's a it's an approval notification which goes through email and teams. Um, everything else is an email. So they're they're getting emails when the quote is approved or rejected. Um, and when it gets loaded to the Oracle system as well, or if there's a failure. There's also notifications okay. that pop up over here on the form level, but that's probably not what you're asking about. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Um, I got one. J Jonathan, was that all your questions? Yeah, sorry, I'll put my hand down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question was on your little submit approval button. Is that just JavaScript or is that a control? That is a PCF control. OK, that calls JavaScript, so a little bit of both, I guess. OK, very cool. I could think of a couple of use cases where I should probably do something like that. Maybe Cali for this our is favorite actually, nonprofit radio station. I didn't develop this button control. Um, that's in, I forget what it's called, but this is a solution that you can download. That they actually already had that just um, gives you some useful little PCF snippets you can use, um, and this button is one of them. How do you use the button to trigger the JavaScript? Good question. So this is just on a text field. When you click the button, it uh, populates the text field, which then triggers the JavaScript on change. And then you just make sure to not 
uh, submit that text field ever so that the value doesn't get set. But yeah, just a text button. You're, you're just populating the, the text field and then that triggers the on change function. And you just clear it when you're done. Yep. That is the idea. Clever. I didn't come Clever up with that, girl. but yes. Oh. <laughs> Awesome. Well, does how anybody have any other? How many oh, hours? <laughs> it's for, for the whole project. <laughs> Was this the whole project? <laughs> now, well, this this is the, the whole front end of the project. Um, most of it was probably on the back end that powers it. Um, as far as the number of hours, too many. But I, I don't actually know the exact number. Okay, just curious. But a lot of it was just figuring out how the pricing engine part uh, which is in the plugin would work and getting that accurate. Mm -hmm. And then just making it idiot proof was also very important. That was probably half the hours. That was probably half the hours. I, I don't know if you're exaggerating there. <laughs> That's probably accurate. That's really cool. Yeah. And probably ballpark. I think this is a, a couple hundred hours, Justin. Probably. A lot of that was just, the flow too, and that that was a big yeah. component that I didn't go over. But um, but yeah, okay. the flow, and that was Kevin, by the way. But that was a big component as well. Very nice. So well, I have a question, but if uh, anybody wants to ever go crazy with emojis, if you do Windows <laughs> key period, it'll pop up a little emoji box, and you can add emojis to your heart's content. Way to jinx your yourself. Your BI team will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, whatever you allow as a value also has to be queried as a value. <laughs> That's funny. Awesome. We have to think about the data teams and reports when we do them. <laughs> Good no, point. We'll we change request our, our own teams. <laughs> they will adapt. Um, They'll figure awesome. it out. Well, Justin, appreciate it. That is very slick. Um, so if anybody has any questions, you can reach out to Justin offline.